everyone welcome back to the channel my name is giselle and i'm here with another echo video for you guys <laughs> this is jesus and he's an echo tech but he also is vascular so i'm just gonna hand him the floor to introduce himself hi i'm jesus i am actually a vascular tech mm -hmm. uh i'm registered uh, vascular tech through ARDMS, but I did learn echo on the job. So I do do echoes. I also had to do abdomens and pelvics, and I'm one of those unicorns that did everything. Um, but since I'm vascular now, I'm kind of going away from abdomen and OB and just want to stick with what I like. <laughs> That's really cool though. Like a lot of people probably yeah. don't even understand that you can do some of or do what you're doing right now. So we're gonna yeah. go into a little bit about his story, but pretty much I met Jesus on Facebook, which there's a lot of Facebook sonography groups that you guys can join if you need more questions. And you know, you can literally meet a lot of people who do ultrasound in these groups. So I recommend you joining those groups. That's how I met him. He's been doing this for six years now. And I wanted to bring him on because you guys ask all these questions about Echo and he does echo while he's just a vascular tech but many of you guys are confused because some programs offer echo echo by itself and then echo and vascular included some programs offer general which don't include vascular but then some programs offer general plus vascular right so it's so confusing when you first start off and think about it but you have to find the program that fits you what you kind of want at first right so basically i went to a general program and if i wanted to you know do echo which is what he kind of did right you went to like a general program and then yeah. now you're doing echo but you can do that so make sure when you're doing your research figure out these programs what they offer and all that good stuff but he is a very good example because like he said he's a unicorn and uh, he's just going to tell you a little bit about his story how he got to where he is today so he's been in this for six years so take it away <laughs> so I started, I went to school in Austin, uh, went to Virginia College. So it was general OB and vascular all lumped into one. Like I couldn't take one or the other. When I went to clinical rotations, I went to a really small hospital that had a vascular tech that did echoes. So I would follow him for the vascular stuff and then I would watch him do echoes. And it just really interested me, like way more than anything else. So I found a job here in Dallas and they were like, well, we need you to do echoes. Like, well, I want to learn Echo, so let's go ahead and jump on that. And then I shadowed the tech for three months, four months, started doing Echoes, got yelled at a lot, did things wrong, and uh, finally kind of got into a groove where I was doing Echoes really fast and efficient. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> so, I yeah. mean, that just goes to show that you can just learn Echo out there. So would you say going from general first, and then say you want to like do echo would be a little bit easier than you starting off in echo and then wanting to learn general or? I, I know a couple of echo techs that move to vascular and which is pretty like linear, like mm -hmm. a parallel, but they won't go to general or OB. It's usually oh. vascular echo is really close and it, it's easy to do that. But from general to echo, I, I think it's pretty easy to do. Because you can probably just like shadow and figure out what the next steps are since you're already registered in something. You can kind yes. of probably hop into there somehow. Yeah, it should be, I don't know like the exact hours. It's probably on ARDMS, like how many exams that you have to shadow and then whenever they can sign off on you to do your board. Okay. That's, that's good. A lot of people are always confused about this stuff. So. <laughs> Just do your research. It's yeah, it's really beneficial if you're planning on going to school um, and you don't know which one to go. If you're uh, able to shadow one or the other, it's very beneficial just watching them go through the motions of each exam. Um, I know with COVID and everything, a lot of hospitals and imaging centers aren't letting students or potential students go, but it, it's very beneficial to watch a whole exam go through and what they have to deal with. Right. And I, I've never seen an echo tech do what they do. I've kind of like peeked my head in because I've pushed my machine and then like a patient that I have has an echo and I'm like, oh, echo's in there. <laughs> I'll be back. You know, <laughs> I've seen them like, do you guys typically are on the left side of the bed? Yes. And so, um, left hand. 
we, we have to be on the left hand. So we scanned left-handed okay. with the probe left-handed and then we manipulate the machine right-handed usually. Uh, some people will do it backwards where you have to hug the patient, which is kind of weird. Hug the like oh. they're on the back and they're scanning right-handed. So they're like the patient's right okay. here and they have it scanning that way and they're manipulating machine left-handed. But yeah, that's weird. So just <laughs> learn left-handed. <laughs> Do they teach you both ways or do you just kind of have to teach yourself if you need, if you're stuck in that situation? Since I kind of learned on the job, it was more of what, what I felt comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And I was able to pick up left-handed easy, so. Yeah, because as vascular, you scanned with your right hand, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. unless you're doing a left arm, which you, I would scan left-handed that way. Oh, you scan left hand. You scan a left arm left-handed. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You'd put yeah, the I... machine on the left side and then scan down instead of reaching over and going down the left arm. I see. So I actually scan the left arm backwards. I'm backwards and upside down. <laughs> right hand. Yeah. Because um, scanning with my left is really hard, but you know how to scan with your left hand, so I'm sure it's easy for you. <laughs> That's cool. It, it's good for a sonographer to be able to scan both-handed just because. Yeah. We never know what we're getting into. Exactly. That's really cool. <laughs> okay. So then, you know, now I I know you showed us in the Discord because Jesus is also part of our Discord community. He has a lab with students and he teaches them, right? You teach them. Yeah. 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 So I just started working at Collin College here in North Texas. And I am, a, I guess, a lab assistant. So everybody that goes into the course has to have lab time and we're just there to be so we're certified and we can uh, watch the student scan they need to have at least one of us there that is uh, a tech i want to do that that'd be so fun it is that sounds so fun so i mean the the reason why i brought you on here today is because everyone's got so many echo questions that i cannot answer i would love for you to be able to answer them for me if you could so basically, they obviously want to know what inspired you to specialize in ECHO. You're technically not registered? Not registered cardiac yet. Okay. But it, it's planned. I'm planning on taking the board sometime soon. So why why ECHO? Why do you like ECHO? Why? <laughs> I, I, it, I think it comes from vascular. Just okay. It's a tube, following the tube all the way down. It's a lot easier than finding, you know, the pancreas tube going all the way down and then just watching the blood flow going through and then the waveforms it's always beautiful and then going from that to the heart and you seeing the the blood flow go through the valves watching the valves open and close watching the color flow through the valves and then the regurg is always fun oh and that sound of the oh. the whooshing yes <laughs> um that's pretty much yeah it's like i i i'm mesmerized by it so yeah well, I totally get it because I personally love vascular. I would rather do vascular any day over abdomen, OB, anything, anything else. It's funny because at the outpatient place I work at, they don't like vascular. I'm like, ah, just give me the vascular. It's fine. I'll take it. I I'll- will do all of that. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I, I understand it's like, it's just, there's a tube. Is there blood flow? Is there a thromus? Is there a plaque? Like, is there a connection? You know, when there's like fistulas and everyone's all like scared. It's just like, it's interesting. And so yeah. I could not be an OB tech for the life of me. No, no. not at all. So, you know, so echo is interesting, you guys. So uh, make sure you do your research before you choose between general and echo. Can you earn a degree in echo or are you limited to a certificate? I think it's a degree. I think it's Associates of Science mm-hmm. in cardiac. But I, I think it's still stenography. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah, not too sure. I've seen like AAS, but if you go to ARDMS.org, they can answer all your questions there. Yeah. <laughs> they have all the like the letters that you can get after your name, like RDCS, RBT, RDMS. I think there's a mm-hmm. musculoskeletal one too. Yes, that's a new one that just popped on there. <laughs> I mean, you know, everything is growing, everything is changing. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm pretty sure though, your best bet is to get a degree in it yeah and where there are I, I know when you do rad tech you can get a certificate where you can only do like one or two exams but mm-hmm. nobody likes hiring that because that's just extra work for the certified techs right um but it gets you like in the door for the school and then you can go and get the full certification okay. i'm not too sure they have that for cardiac or any kind of ultrasound yeah um i think the only certificate is like a midwife which is just oh. like a basic uh ob type 
thing. That's actually interesting because I didn't know any of that. I didn't even know there was a midwife one. Do you know much about it? Like, do you know? Uh, just whatever's on ARDMS is <laughs> it's like a quick exam. But I think they have to be in the field or they have to have like another certification to be able to get to that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not too sure. That's totally out of our league, y'all. Yes. So what are your registries that you have? You have right? Just vascular, yeah. And, and did you take SPI before yeah. that? And you took, was it ultrasound physics in your class, in your program? Yeah. And then you were able to take it? Yeah. Okay. And your program was, was it accredited or not accredited? <laughs> uh, when I started, it wasn't accredited. And they were like, oh, we're working on it. We're working on it. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> and then like halfway through our program, they're like, okay, we're, we're accredited. You're, you're good to go. So okay. take all the boards. Like, oh, okay. That's, yay, that's good. Because I know that's like the most common ask question. I oh, I don't know. You've been in there longer than me. Is that the most common ask question? Yeah, it, it is it's <laughs> constantly asked, like credit or non-credit. So uh, with Calling College that we're at, it's not, we're working on our accreditation, mm -hmm. uh, but we do have the AART. So it's not accredited, but you take the ART exam and then you can sit for your SPI and then you can sit for all the boards after that. There you go. Um, accredited is not like in your area or not available to you. It's not the end of the world. You can still get into a program and still sit the board. Got it. Because th those, that's what everybody wants is just board exams. Yeah. They just want to know if you're registered. Like that's, that's all you really yeah. need. But in order to get there, you have to get, you know, there's the steps before to get there, but that's all they really look at, right? Yeah. So, what is your favorite view and why? This sounds like an echo question that I don't understand. <laughs> so four chamber is probably my favorite just because you see all four chambers, you know, both mm -hmm. valve, the tricuspid and the mitral valve opening and closing. So it is lower, still intercostal. You still have to shoot through the ribs, but it's lower down, shooting up towards the heart. So you get the apex of the heart and you get all four, all four chambers. And it's really like pretty or something like pretty yeah it's real it's real pretty nice and clear usually skinny not too too big patients or nice clear picture yeah. really nice oh that's so cool i wish i knew <laughs> what it looked like <laughs> <laughs> so does the protocol you do differ for each patient or symptom so say someone came in for a stroke or a heart attack or or i found out from taylor that you can get an echo for swollen legs which i had no idea my protocol was pretty limited mm -hmm. usually took it about 30 minutes to go through it all but that's what the cardiologist wanted okay so, so it depends um, on what the cardiologist probably wants right for yeah and, and uh, there really wasn't like if this was for this or this do this exam it, it's just take all the, the pictures of the chambers get all the velocities all the valves all the cine loops that you needed and send it off to the doctor throughout everywhere you go protocols will be different I remember someone was like, why do you scan the IVC and the aorta when you're doing a renal? Well, some places do that and some places don't. It just depends on the place and the doctor, the charge, what they're doing. Is that the same with echo or is it just one set like you have to get all these chambers, you know? The way we did it, it was just get all the chambers, get all, uh, make sure you get the whole heart. I mean, sometimes a, a lot of difficult patients, people with COPD, you know, breathing problems and stuff like that. It's just hard to see the heart and you just try to get as, as best pictures as you can. Mm, okay. So this is one of the girl's questions because uh, she's, she's not in a program yet, but she's confused because of the name, I guess. So she's saying, how does it differ from regular scanning with ultrasound? Like I, I think the, the probe is different. It's the little pencil probe. It's it's not the linear or the curve or anything like that. It's, it's yeah, it's the little squared probe, and which the name of it escapes me right now. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's different. So it's not like when you're doing abdomen, you, you have the, the notch goes towards the head or towards you. On this one, it, it's more of a clock. Like you move it oh. to you know 11 o'clock and then you turn it to three o'clock. I guess that's a little bit different than the you know vascular or general yeah that makes sense that does i mean it's different because especially the way you're positioning the patient to you're standing on the left side and the yeah. probe is way different so so the heart is usually behind the left lung so mm -hmm. we can't with ultrasound we can't go through the lung because we just get fuzz so we have them lay on their left side and then that lung kind of flops over and then the heart kind of sits right there Okay. So we'll start here and then we'll do the peristernal long axis and we have the notch facing towards the right shoulder and we turn the notch towards the left shoulder and then we get a peristernal short axis where the heart's cut in half 
and we go through the left ventricle and go all the way up to the mitral valve. Ooh, wow, that sounds so yeah. fancy. <laughs> so fancy that I don't understand. That's so, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's definitely way different than general ultrasound. That's yes. Cool. Someone asked, how do you measure the heart? Is the heart measurable? <laughs> so how do you so measure we, it? The main measurement is the left ventricle. Like we want to see how, how efficient that is pumping everything because that's the one that shoots the blood everywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, we want to measure all the other uh, chambers to make sure that they're within normal limits. Uh, that's one thing that you have to know is a female heart is going to be different than a male heart. So you have to know all the measurements for the female heart. You need to know all the measurements for the, the male heart. No heart's going to be a little bit larger. We got big yeah. hearts, huh? <laughs> we, got, we got the big hearts, I guess, yeah. Um, so we have to measure that. And then, of course, we measure the blood flow through the valves, all of the valves, the mitral valve, tricuspid valve, the aortic valve, and the pulmonary valve. Dang. Okay, so lots and lots of measurements. Yeah. So other than OB, when you put M-mode on the heart to get a fetal heart tone, uh, mm -hmm. we use M-mode to see the ventricle opening and closing, and we can measure it that way. Unless we want to do it on the B mode, we actually see it pumping, and then we can measure it there. M mode gives us a little bit better or accurate measurement because mm -hmm. we can see it a little bit better. Cardiac is the only one that uses M mode because ah. we learned it in school for general. But that's, that's the only, I've never really actually used it except for on a baby so, heart. Yeah, so with cardiac, we, we use it all the time for the left ventricle, yeah. and left ventricle and the mitral valve and the aortic valve. Yeah. We use M-mode and then we'll use continuous wave Doppler and uh, pulse wave Doppler. So continuous wave is giving us an average of what's going through that valve. Pulse wave is giving us the you know more accurate uh, waveform. Mm -hmm. So we just want to make sure that what's the pressure gradient going through that. So, so they asked if, if it's hard to do an exam on babies. Is it hard to do echoes on babies? It is. I, I never really had to do like a baby baby. Uh, the youngest was, I think, four. I believe they were crying and holding their breath the whole time and grabbing my arm. It <laughs> was not a really pretty exam, and I got yelled at afterwards for it. Um, but you, like, you yeah. take the best pictures you can, yeah. It's like, hey, you weren't there with that baby. I, I had to take pictures and that was it. I mean, I've done a renal on a four-year-old and uh, she was uh, rolling all around, up and down. Her head was like backwards. Like, oh, it was crazy. But I got the pictures I needed, you know. <laughs> they weren't pretty. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, I work obviously in a pediatric hospital. So we do have echo techs. And every time I'm up there in like the NICU or the PICU, they have the doctor with them. So it's them and the doctor together. I don't know if it's like that everywhere else, but I thought that was interesting. Have you had to call a code or perform CPR ever? I have not. I've heard stories of people doing an echo and they see the heart pump for the last time on the screen. And then the patient is coding right there. Um, that hasn't happened to me, but it, it does happen. Yeah, that's scary. Let's hope it doesn't happen. And so for, for your, in your opinion, like what's the best route after clinicals? Like after, if someone's like done with clinicals and they want to do echo, what's their best route? What should they do? Like they went to school for general and they're, they're in clinicals and they want to do echo? Let's say both. Let's say they were in general and then they did clinicals and they're like, oh, I want to do echo. And then your advice for someone who was in echo after clinicals, like now what do they do after that? <laughs> well, either way, you have to get registered in something, like find a registry, uh, whatever you went to school for, abdomen, vascular, whatever, get that registry under your belt and then go from there because not too many places are going to hire somebody that's not registered. It's more of an insurance thing and accreditation for their lab. So if the lab's accredited, everybody has to have a registry. Mm -hmm. If they, they don't, then they can, they risk losing that accreditation okay yeah and some people have no idea about all that yeah so each lab has to have a certain accreditation so they can build the insurance and then insurance will see that the exam wasn't done by a registered tech and they'll refuse to pay for it okay that makes sense so y'all get registered after yes get registered in something and then you can choose whatever you want after that Right. And then you can just like figure it out. 
Okay, that's, yeah. good. that's good advice. Do you ever get bored scanning the same organs? Well, I mean, this is, I know you do vascular yeah. and you do everything <laughs> else, but do you ever get bored just scanning echoes? Thinking I think I would get bored scanning abdomen more than I would get bored scanning cardiac. Okay. <laughs> and then I just don't want to scan OB at all. I can, I can live a happy life not scanning another baby. I mean, I give props to everyone who do OB because. Oh yeah, that, that is way more stressful than I can ever put up with. And whoever does OB is it gets all of my respect. Mm -hmm. I cannot personally do it. Yeah, and and a lot of people come into this thinking they're gonna go into OB, and they yeah. realize, nope. Bye -bye. Actually, in, in school, I think OB was like, put me on the edge of, I don't want to do this at all. Oh, like, that's how OB frustrating. Really, yeah, it was very frustrating for me just to, to yeah. none, not just learning it, just finding what we're looking for when we're scanning and just, you're going to have to see that and then walk out of the room and go tell the doctor. Yeah. And then you have to finish the rest of your day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I just don't know how some of the um, people who do MFM or OB or high-risk OB, like, it's just so tough. It's just yeah. tough. What's something you wish someone told you about your job that you know now, like, you know, that they didn't tell you about before? You can go into <laughs> Echo. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to school oh. for Echo. Okay. Uh, I, prob I would probably look more into that than what I did was just go into ultrasound because I like ultrasound. All y'all, if you want to do echo, you can do it if you really want to. <laughs> yes. And then finally, what advice do you have for anyone desiring to gain more experience in echo or ultrasound in general? But pretty much I'd say towards echo because you, you know, you wanted to do echo, you weren't going into echo, but you know, if, if they want to go in echo, like what, what advice would you give them? Probably get a job at a small hospital. Like if you go, if you have a chance, um, I know you see a lot more in the big hospitals, in the big cities, you'll see a lot of more pathology and a lot more patients. But if you go to like a small rural hospital, you get more chances to be, you know, a cardiac sonographer, a vascular sonographer, general sonographer. And you can also, you know, have a chance to do other modalities if you, if the hospital really needs you, they'll you know, have, send you off for training to do x-ray too and CT. So you can broaden your imaging information, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it, it get better chances that way. I think the pay is a little crappy in the smaller hospitals, mm -hmm. but you can do more yeah. if that's what you want. If you want to get more letters behind your name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of full body text over. There's like a city called Pahrump, which is out there like I think it's like an hour from Vegas and they are a 25 bed hospital and their ultrasound techs know how to do full body so you know when I worked there I went there and I was like I feel bad because I don't do echo I can just do everything else but I don't do echo and then sometimes they would even help x-ray and they would just yeah. do x-rays you know so it's like you have more of that opportunity if that's something that you want, like to get as many mm -hmm. registries behind you, because that's your hospital. You're you're in Vegas, yeah. and all you do is yeah, I'm, I'm general in a 700 plus bed hospital. All I do is general, everything but the heart. We get a bunch of random, random exams like oh check this, you know, <laughs> or, oh there's a bump on my back, check that, you know, oh is there an abscess, you know. So it's completely different than outpatient, but. I can't like really go, hey, I could, I guess, ask the echo text if I could shadow them maybe, but they're a completely but, different department. Yeah, so that would be something you would have to do on your own time and, yeah. you know, help on me. my day off, I want to go to work and yeah. shadow a tech, yeah, so that's, yeah. that's something like if you go to a rural hospital, they're like, hey, we'll train you in doing this other stuff because they're not as busy there's still pathology that they see and all of that, but they can have you shadow while you're there working anyways. Right. And I think that's a good opportunity. So, and there's so many places in the United States, so many hospitals, yes. so many. <laughs> and I used to work for a small company and we'd go to doctor's offices and uh, this company also had echo techs and general techs. 
and we would just work in like little doctor's offices with a little laptop machine that you guys use too. And I would perform general exams on there and then they would perform uh, their echo exams on that little laptop. And they probably could have taught me echo if I really asked, but it's so cool mm -hmm. like, learning from all of you guys. And uh, thank you so much for being here and answering these questions. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it and comments down below and likes the video because that's what we do here. <laughs> Anything else that you want to tell everybody? No, just uh, <laughs> do your research. Make yes. sure you go to the school that fits for you and uh, get your registries. Oh yeah, those are three things. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> that's what you gotta do. do what we do. But yeah. thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. So no problem. See all in the next video. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>